Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Earlier this month, investigators with NASA's historic OSIRIS-REx mission held a press conference reporting some of their initial findings at the asteroid Bennu. As you know, if you've seen some of our previous Space News interviews with Eugene Bagashov, this is one of two recent space missions to asteroids. The other is the mission by the Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2 to the asteroid Rugu. Now, one fact that Eugene has remarked upon is how strikingly similar those two asteroids appear. They both have, I guess, what you would call a diamond-like appearance, both with sort of spinning top shapes. They both have raised equators. Well, today we're going to focus on NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission and some of the revelations that are actually quite incredible when you think about them. And which again, like every historic mission to comets, they have completely confounded the predictions based on standard theory. They have, however, confirmed the so-called radical predictions of the electric universe theory. At this point, the most interesting thing to me is the clear evidence for relatively small scale, yet very significant comet-like activity on the asteroid Bennu. Now, it's very easy to understand why this activity is so significant for an understanding of both asteroids and comets. We've reported many times on this ongoing puzzle of asteroids that put on cometary displays. At asteroid Bennu, as noted at a recent NASA press conference, scientists have observed an energetic emission of dust particles, which was not expected at all in standard theory. And this kind of activity was noted as early as March 19th of this year. New scientists reported that, quote, Bennu isn't a cold, dead rock after all. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft has spotted the asteroid spewing out dust and rocks on 11 separate occasions over a period of just a few weeks, which was completely unexpected. This calls to mind for me one of my favorite episodes of Space News, which was a report on an asteroid which suddenly sprouted six comet-like tails. And I remember one of the investigators stating, it's hard to believe we're looking at an asteroid. In that case, the explanation astronomers favored was that radiation pressure from sunlight, called the Yorp effect, caused a sudden rapid increase in the asteroid's rotation, which then caused material to be flung out into space. And then radiation from sunlight stretched and confined the dust to form the collimated jets. And now again, this time at asteroid Bennu, NASA scientists tell us that they've observed a rapid increase in the asteroid's rotation. And once again, the best explanation they can offer is the Yorp effect, a rapid increase in rotation supposedly caused by radiation pressure. Today, we're going to discuss all of this and more with our chief science advisor, physicist Wal Thornhill. And as we begin, this is an ideal time to show a side-by-side -side comparison of the close-up images of the asteroid Bennu and the comet 67P. Now keep in mind for our discussion today that it's always been the position of the electric universe theory that both the respective origins and behaviors of comets and asteroids are much more closely related than mainstream astronomy has ever suggested. These bodies should look similar in the electric universe theory, if not identical, because they were both born in the same events. We have proposed they were torn from the surfaces of planetary bodies relatively recently, only several thousands of years ago. And we propose that comet activity, whether it's on a comet or on an asteroid, has nothing to do with sublimation of ices and other volatiles. It's fundamentally electrical discharge activity, resulting from the bodies moving through regions of different electrical potential in the plasma medium that pervades all of space. So with the introduction out of the way, let me now turn to Wal Thornhill. Wal, the other day you listened to the NASA press conference that I described, and my first question to you is, 
What are your thoughts on the ongoing posture from investigators? That the real significance of the mission is what it can tell us about the quote four and a half billion year old history and origins of the solar system. Yeah, that's right. Like almost every NASA space shot, they're launched with the benediction that this will help us understand the origins of the solar system and of course of us. The obvious objection to this is that we can know nothing about origins without understanding far more about the science behind the formation of stars and planets and how they uh, interact with one another. And at present, the story we have is hundreds of years old. It hasn't been modified despite almost every mission returning results which were not expected and not predicted. The asteroids supposed to be leftovers from the original formation of the solar system. In the standard history, of course, all of the planets were formed from the coalescence of dust and gas circling around the sun. It's never been shown that this actually works. But of course, having once established some of these planets, they tend to scoop up the remnants of gas and dust. But some objects which have collided with one another, and once again, we, we need collisions in this model, are supposed to have produced fragments which uh, form the asteroids, and particularly those between Mars and Jupiter. The comets, on the other hand, are supposed to be primordial objects which have been knocked into the solar system and therefore, in the standard thinking, are more composed of dust and frozen gases. So they're more like a dusty ice ball or an icy dust ball. All of the observations that have been made close up of both comets and asteroids now show that they don't look any different really. And in fact, asteroids have been known to light up like a comet and have a coma and a tail on occasions. This is inexplicable. Almost by accident, some long exposure shots were taken of asteroid Bennu, and they showed there was a cloud of dust and particles orbiting the asteroid. Now, this was a total surprise because the question is, how can they have got into orbit from the asteroid and it also suggested to me that the same kind of things that happen on comets, which eject large quantities of dust and particles, is also happening on this asteroid, which once again makes asteroids and comets, the division between them, very obscure indeed. They appear to be the same kinds of bodies, which is exactly what the Electric Universe has been saying since we began. And that is that asteroids and comets are both formed in the same events. And the only distinction between the two is the fact that comets end up on more elliptical orbits, which take them from regions of different voltages in the solar system with respect to the sun. And of course, when they speed up and move around the sun, the comet is experiencing the most severe change in voltage, which causes them to begin to arc. And that is the origin of the jets and the material being thrown into space. And also some of it, as has been found with Comet 67P, with material orbiting it. In the case of Comet 67P, a diligent person analysing the historical record, the historical images, found an object about four metres across orbiting Comet 67P. And the very same kind of thing now has been found at Bennu, and it has been observed in the past that asteroids sometimes have small moons. Now, none of this really fits any of the original ideas about comets and asteroids. One of the researchers pointed out that the uh, asteroid was behaving somewhat like a comet. And of course, the standard model of how comets produce their jets and eject material into space is that it is caused by sublimating ices. This despite the fact that they've never been able to see any significant water ice on the surfaces of comets. So, of course, it's expected to be buried out of sight in the comet. The electric universe expects any object on a slightly elliptical orbit or a very elliptical orbit to experience changes in voltages, which are sufficient to cause an object in space, in a conductive plasma, to begin discharging. And in the diffuse vacuum of space, 
the number of charge carriers available mean that that discharge won't look like lightning or anything like it. It will be a, a glow discharge and a cathode jet, as it's called. A cathode jet removes material from a surface. It machines it. It's called uh, electric discharge machining. And it has very characteristic uh, effects on the surface of anything that's being machined in that fashion. Almost every image of a discharging comet also has these bright spots on the surface. And they tend to be aligned in exactly the places, the high points and so on, and edges of scarps that you would expect in an electric discharge, which always concentrates on edges and points. The other thing is that the erosion of the Comet Temple 1 caused the scarps to recede. Now, there's no reason known why comets should have any geological type of relief at all, because if it's merely an icy ball sublimating into space, it should smooth the surface, not create a geological looking surface. The surface, close up surface shots of Comet 67P show all sorts of things, like uh, the neck appears to be differently composed than the two lobes. Also, it shows layering, which is not expected. If you're gradually accepting material in deep space, it's very sparse and finely divided. There should be no distinct layering. It suggests events or a sequence of events in the formation of the body. And also, when it comes to the electric universe model, there is the electrostatic attraction of material. So if it's suddenly enveloped in a cloud of dust and fine-grained material, it will be attracted electrostatically and form layers. Also, if the precursor to the body happened to be a part of a planetary surface, it is possible that some large chunks will appear with the original layering of the surface they were ripped from. So <laughs> we look for geological features on the other planets. If some of their surfaces have been torn into space, including entire mountains, then uh, we can expect to see geological features on both comets and asteroids as the debris from such uh, electrical encounters between planets in their recent history. Right. Well, while on this topic, I'd like to take a moment and refer viewers to the experiments that you and Dr. C.J. Ransom performed in 2004. The two of you performed many electrical discharge experiments to different types of minerals and sands, and these included the most common minerals found on planetary surfaces. We've noted countless times Dr. Ransom's results producing electrically generated spherules, which replicate the so-called Martian blueberries. But the ramifications for these experiments go far beyond the blueberries on Mars. As you can see on this table, which was featured in the paper that we're linking to in the description box, these electrical discharge experiments produced varieties of spherules, which reproduce many if not most, of the familiar types of rocky celestial bodies seen in the solar system. From the solid spheres that we're all familiar with, representing a typical rocky planet, to the double-lobed shape of many comets and asteroids and moons, which we've talked about countless times, to bodies with complex geological layering, to bodies with both equatorial bands and equatorial bulges, Again, calling to mind the two asteroids, Bennu and Rugu, to dramatic hemispheric dichotomies, which is one of the biggest mysteries in planetary science. Why are the hemispheres of a planet like Mars so different from one another? Now, these features that I just listed are not only a puzzle when they are seen on bodies in our solar system. For planetary scientists, they tend to require very different processes for each individual body. However, through the simple process of electric arcs blasting these common planetary surface materials, we see produced stunning analogs of countless unique forms of rocky bodies. Yeah, that's right. And this gets back to the history aspect. NASA believes in the clockwork, largely undisturbed for billions of years story of the planets. And yet, when we look at the cratering on the moon and some of the other features on moons and asteroids and comets, it doesn't appear to show this 
pleasant, undisturbed kind of um, uh, surface features that you might expect. Mm -hmm. Even on the earth, it's ignored. You know, you see sharp mountain peaks in the Alps and so on. And you think, well, if that's been there for millions of years, how come it looks so sharp? But there is a strange blindness instituted by the way we're taught. We're not taught to think about things in such detail when that detail doesn't fit the standard story that is trying to be hammered into us. And the result is we're turning out highly intelligent people who have been trained not to see certain things. And in the case of Comet 67P, these inexplicable things tend not to be shown anymore. We see instead the rubber ducky image when we talk about the comet. All of the puzzling surface features get more or less quickly forgotten. And this is another feature of the, how the human brain works. When there's something that doesn't fit your beliefs or your idea of how the world works, it's quickly forgotten. It's put into a pigeonhole where it remains. When it comes to talking about the history of the solar system, to show just how out of whack the standard story, peaceful story of the formation of the solar system is, Scientists were totally uh, astounded by the findings at Pluto, which is the largest uh, small uh, body in the solar system. It was not expected to have the kinds of features that you see on the inner planets. And also its moons cannot be explained. They seem so different to the, the body itself, Pluto, that they appear to have been captured. All of these things point to the fact that the standard story is grasping at straws most of the time in trying to explain these features and they're certainly not predicted they're a total surprise it was remarked that the asteroid Bennu has a spinning top shape in other words it has a raised uh, if you like equator a ring around the object now the standard formation theory of the formation of these bodies doesn't account for such a neat surface arrangement however the electric model does do two things. One, it explains how these objects accrete electromagnetically, which is very rapid, and the material in the dust and uh, other debris, which is ejected from a, a large planetary body in one of these electrical discharges, is subject to what's known as a Birkeland current in the near vacuum of space. And the Birkeland current, cosmologically, is the origin of rotation because the difference in mass between the proton and the electron in that discharge causes rotation, electromagnetic-driven rotation. When it comes to a spinning body in space, one of the big surprises with asteroid Bennu is that after a series of observations, it was discovered that it was actually spinning faster. <laughs> the only mechanism available to the astrophysicist at present is what's called the Yorp effect. And that is down to the radiation pressure of light. This is an extremely weak force. And in the short period of time over which this rotation speed increase was witnessed, it would have been totally inadequate. This gets down to a fundamental problem in uh, astrophysics, and that is that gravity and mass is not understood. Mass is undefined in physics, which is incredible. One of the foundation stones of doing physics is to actually know what you're talking about when you mention mass. But E equals mc squared says that mass is an energetic variable. So any change in the energy of the body, and that can be potential, electrical, mechanical, and motion, any of those things can cause the object to change in mass. And when you do that, the conservation of angular momentum says that if you reduce the mass, the speed must increase. So the rotation rate is down to a change in the electrical energy being experienced by the asteroid Bennu. And this is to be expected because asteroid Bennu at the time when these uh, readings were done was on its closest, to, or just past its closest approach in its orbit to the sun. And it is a somewhat elliptical orbit, which is enough to create uh, mild cometary displays and the ejection of material from the surface into the space surrounding it. Some of the particles being given velocities which are unaccountable for using the idea that it's driven by uh, sublimating gases. So we have a simple answer to the change in speed, the actual spinning of the body, the uh, raised equatorial 
regions and the material orbiting it.